Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Legends of Chess 2020 round 7 and today I would like to introduce the new player, at least on my channel, Boris Gelfand. I haven't shown any Boris Gelfand games yet, so that's the time. Uh, and Boris Gelfand was one of the biggest fan of Akiba Rubinstein, so that's important for our channel, uh, as Akiba Rubinstein saga is one of the main series on my channel, so if you haven't seen it yet, Check over there, I show all the life um, and the games and career of Akiba Rubinstein. We are still in, you know, 1907, where Akiba Rubinstein just to start to play the wonderful chess. So you are still on time just to jump over there. Uh, and Boris Gelfand was not only fan of uh, Akiba Rubinstein, but also he played very similar style. So he wanted to make the, the opening uh, as a bridge to the end game. So all his moves should be part of the bigger plan. Uh, and uh, Boris Gelfand in 2012 had the chance actually to play for the world champion title. He won all the candidates tournaments and he was 44 years old at the time, so pretty impressive. Um, and in the game number seven, he actually won against Vichy Anand and in the game number eight, he managed to actually produce the shortest decisive game in the World Championship history. That was pretty dramatic, just 17 uh, moves miniature. Uh, and in the playoffs, in the rapid time control, Anand won, so uh, Anand retained the title. So Boris Gelfand was almost, almost the world champion. But you know, that is the difference between being the, the world champion and being the almost the world champion. Uh, anyway, one of the strongest players on the planet, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Uh, and still a legend. He still very actively trained the, the younger generation, for example, together with Vladimir Kramnik. Um, I saw their courses in the in the India. So they, they teach, the, you know, the youngest uh, Indian generation and uh, the youngest grandmasters over there. So definitely uh, very active on that field uh, right now. And he was invited to this tournament because his rapid ranking is still quite high, 2701. Uh, he is already 52 years old and in this game he's gonna play as white and his opponent Vichy Anand, Vichy Anand, so they meet again, they meet again eight years later and um, Vichy Anand ranking in rapid time control 2751, uh, Vichy is 50 years old, still very active, for example uh, he played in Tata Steel uh, tournament in Wegenzee in 2020 in January, uh, I showed a couple of his games at that time uh, as I was, you know, starting the channel. Uh, and in this game he played as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Boris Gelfand opens with d4, like Akiba Rubinstein, most of the games. We have knight on f6, c4, e6, knight on f3, and now d5. So Queen's Gambit declined structure and g3. Kind of Catalan uh, approach with the bishop on this longest diagonal. We have bishop on b4, mislocating the, the bishop, so bishop on d2, and now bishop goes back to e7. We have bishop on g2, we have uh, castle uh, and here queen on c2 knight b on d2 all of this is a pretty standard and here um, all the games actually all the games in the in the database ends with the with the castle this is the most natural move in the position however boris gelfand uh, thinks okay this is the 20 uh, 20 so i should play h4 like alpha zero uh, and it's always good to try h4 it's always good to have you know advanced h4 uh, but what to do next with that pawn and as Anand Castle already, he has a choice to make any continuation. He can play something solid like c6, he can take the pawn on c4, but he chooses to play the most aggressive c5, uh, striking in the center. Uh, and Gelfand now has a choice. He wants to play uh, with isolated queen's pawn, maybe against isolated queen's pawn. Uh, he started with c takes on d5, e takes on d5, and now he could play um, d takes on c5. However, uh, position of black would be too active. 
uh, this isolated pawn all the four minor pieces are still on the board so that probably would prefer uh, black you know uh, that would not be difficult for Anand to play so uh, Gelfand um, decided to play knight on c3 first development first we have rook to e8 and castle by white and here Vichy plays h6 slightly weakening the the pawn structure in the front of the king so uh but he was probably very comfortable with uh, some ideas like uh, queen on c1 sacrifice on h1 the knight could jump very fast uh, this bishop and the knight also focus on d5 so uh, it could escalate uh, quickly but probably it's not the issue in this uh, in this position as gelfand played something much stronger bishop on f4 bishop on f4 and the position is uh, very dangerous because this bishop uh, controls for example c7 so the knight can jump over there uh, and can be very nasty on c7 so uh, Vichy uh, make a prophylactic a6 move uh, and now rook a to d1 so it starts to be uh, quite sneaky in the in the center for example this pawn can attack on c5 uh, and then the pawn on d5 would be attacked twice so even if the if the knight takes uh, then actually this knight can jump to, to e5 uh, as it's not controlled by the knight and the bishop can join the attack on, on d5 so it's pretty sneaky already uh, and black actually cannot play something like c takes on d4 because white believe me or not can play knight on b5 and I hope you see that already why the knight cannot be taken because of the bishop c7 uh, trapping the queen so that would be you know incredible black would be forced to to move the the rook making a space for the queen uh, and then for example after knight on c7 rook on a7 knight on d4 look at this position black totally you know uh, misplays of the all of the pieces rook on a7 what is that rook on f8 again the bishop still undeveloped so that position is just bad for black so uh, definitely taking that ignoring that is is not possible this is why rook a to d1 is a very strong and vichy anand doesn't have much choice and play c4 now he has the benoni like structure with the three pawns on the queen side uh, attacking against two pawns uh, from the other hand of course gelfand has the attack on the uh, center so he can undermine the, the pawn on d5 however he has a slightly different plan because after knight on e5 knight on b6 he play b3 b3 to undermine the pawn chain this way uh, so so attack from the front uh, and vichy had the chance to play c takes on b3 and after queen on b3 bishop on e6 and he would have very solid position still have two pawns against one pawn on the queen side so um quite strong and also he over protecting the the pawn on d5 so the position is pretty solid so that was the chance however vichy for some reason played bishop on b4 uh, and now he is in some troubles because after b takes on c4 d takes on c4 e4 so Gelfan controls the center look at this all the center is controlled and this pawns gonna roll in the center of course black has three pawns on the uh, on the queen side uh, but that's gonna be enough or not that is the always the question in this Benoni like structures however usually uh, the center is stronger than the than the queen side and here Anand plays another inaccuracy a5 giving for free b5 square and Gelfand of course jumps with the knight uh, immediately so for now look at this the pawn on c4 is attacked twice and after taking um, there is the problem with this bishop control c7 so the knight can jump there and for example fork the rook so pretty dangerous uh, situation and Anand played uh, this time the best move in the position uh, knight on h5 attack attacking this dangerous bishop so bishop retreat to e3 and now bishop on d7 attacking the the knight we have knight on d7 eliminating the threat uh, and now queen on d7 and here a4 so creating very nice outpost on b5 uh, we have knight on f6 retreat 
And now d5, extremely strong move and uh, Gelfand just, you know, dominating the position. Uh, not only, you know, attacking the knight. The point is, if the knight, for example, retreat, uh, then white have, you know, decisive attack in the center, f4, uh, e5, d6, and this is just unstoppable. So uh, it's it's almost impossible to play and defend that. Uh, so Anand decided to sacrifice his knight for two pawns. And he plays knight to a4. Uh, and after queen on a4, queen was defender of, of e4. So now there is a chance to play knight to e4. And after bishop to e4, rook to e4. And here Boris Gelfand says, okay, I have the knight for, for two pawns, so let's simplify the positions even more. Knight to c3, attacking the rook, defending the queen, and also um, discover attack on the queen. And um, Vichy Anand exchanged the queen, so we have queen to a4, knight to a4, and now b5 with tempo. Uh, knight to b6 with the attack on the rook, rook on d8, and now bishop on f4 however remember this position king on g2 was probably the best move in the position very important for now we don't see why uh, however i will explain you why this can be you know important move because black doesn't have a lot of active move here so it's not so important to you know play the fastest moves uh, bishop on f4 of course preparing the march of the of the pawn so that's the obvious move and um, we have bishop on d6 asking to exchange even more pieces bishop to d6 rook to d6 and now knight on c8 attacking the rook rook on d7 and now d6 so past pawn is uh, slowly pushed and of course knight on b6 gonna be uh, played next uh, and then the, the pawn can go to d7 and so on uh, but Anand also knows the you know the rule that past pawn should be pushed and we have c3 uh, rook on d5 now going after this pawns uh, on the fifth rank and now b4 by Anand and now what to play as white because if white decide to d take the, the pawn on a5, look at this, c2, uh, and after, let's say, knight on e7, uh, because this knight on c8, let's say, it's not really great there, uh, but should be maybe moved to the, to the defense. Uh, so after king on h7, knight on f5, b3, um, and rook on b5, it's not so easy actually to win as white. Probably is even uh, impossible. So for example, rook on c4, rook on c1, now g6, kicking the knight, uh, knight on e3, uh, and after rook to c3, knight d1, uh, rook to d3 and knight b2 and uh, yes white actually blocked these pawns however how to win this as white you know uh, it's critical position it's it's very difficult black of course can can pick up the the pawn on d6 and after rook takes on b3 uh rook d1 with check uh knight to d1 uh rook d1 and uh, and yeah that's uh, that's draw even black can try to win that game so uh, as you see it's not even possible to take the pawn on a5 so Gelfand sticks to his plan, knight to b6, kicking the rook, we have rook on d8 and now d7. Uh, and this rook still, you know, can jump behind the pawns, the past pawns uh, and try to disturb them. However, it's not so easy now. Uh, we have rook to e6, harassing the, the knight, knight to a4 and now rook to c6. Uh, knight to c5 uh, blocking um, the support of the of the rook to the pawn and now rook to c7 this is the real plan so anand want to in the right moment actually maybe to exchange uh, give up the exchange and maybe these three pawns can be more powerful um, than than the whole rook uh, we have rook to e5 so now very serious threat coming to, to e8 with check, so king on h7 is forced. And here Gelfand should probably rethink his position if it's still winning, because these three pawns uh, are extremely dangerous. So uh, rook on c1 was probably the, the only way uh, to actually draw that, not win, draw that. Uh, and then black 
because black gonna be very aggressive with the pawns a4 uh, and deflecting this knight knight to a4 and then of course rook c on d7 uh, and if white actually exchange the the knight for these two pawns that would be the dead draw uh, and that was the chance to to simply the draw however it looks like gelfan tries to win and play rook to a1 uh, going after this pawn however is it even possible to take that uh, after a4 yes the knight is not uh, deflected anymore however rook a4 and here anand plays c2 and how to continue how to continue uh white can try knight on b3 give up this pawn knight on b3 uh, and just give up the, this pawn but it doesn't work rook on b4 losing on the spot because rook on d1 with check and after king on g2 rook c3 actually wins the knight defender of the of the c1 and then queening so it's not possible even rook on c5 it doesn't work because because queening anyway so uh, it it doesn't work this way uh, the only way for white could be probably rook to a2 uh, and rook to e2 but it also too slow after rook on d3 attacking the knight if knight is moved then of course uh, queening so uh, sacrificing the knight however after rook on e2 uh, rook to b3 rook a to c2 rook c2 rook c2 uh, rook to c3 uh, let's say rook e3 and then simply rook c7 and and that's of course is winning for black as this pawn uh gonna be always on on b file and if white actually decide to exchange that then black will have the time to to clear up the the pawns on the on the king side so Boris tries to bring the rook to the first rank, but it's already too late. So feel free to pause the video uh, and find the winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the only way to win is actually take the pawn on d7 it doesn't matter which rook uh rook d to d7 will be uh, more precise however it doesn't really matter both moves are okay and after knight on d7 rook on d7 uh Boris Gelfan played rook to c5 uh, if he tries to defend on the first rank it also doesn't work simply because b3 is coming uh, rook a to c1 and after rook c7 defending this pawn and, and b2 is coming and white can do nothing about that b2 and white has to give the the rook for the for the pawn this way uh or maybe also it's possible to to play king to f3 uh and after exchanging that this position is very similar uh white has to um, take the pawn exchange the rooks uh but at the same time um black of course gonna come and pick up the pawns uh and win the game so um, that's not possible this is why boris gelfand try rook to c5 uh go with the with the rook behind but however it's too slow rook on d1 is of course winning because after king on g2 uh, b3 is coming however uh, vichy anand played b3 first which is of course also winning uh, rook to d1 it's still on the table this is why i said in the past that if the king is on g2 uh, there would be no threat here not in this position of course it's too late already however if the king is um, on g2 couple of moves ago that that would be possible to actually draw uh, for now rook to f1 just to avoid this check uh, but we have rook to d1 anyway and after king to g2 rook takes on f1 uh, king to f1 b2 uh, boris gelfand resign so what a game boris gelfand had a really huge advantage in the middle game he had it's difficult to say uh you know winning game however it was truly in akiba rubinstein style he just played better and better moves uh, improve his position uh, and then some inaccuracies and vichy anan who is known as a you know defender of the lost positions uh, hopeless positions uh, just managed to defend the position and at the end even win madras tiger striked back and that's about the thumbnail you've just seen 
at the beginning. So I would like to show you also the, the standings after round seven. Magnus Carlsen, Janne Pomniasi and Anish Giri are dominating this tournament. It wasn't difficult to actually predict that a uh, younger generation gonna gonna rule. However, uh, very surprisingly, Ding Liren, three points only in the last position. Uh, Vladimir Kramnik is doing pretty well and Boris Gelfand, if he could win against Vichy Anand, he could have, uh, you know, 10 points and that would be a really interesting fight between uh, Kramnik, Fiedler, Ivanchuk and Gelfand. But now uh, we have Fiedler with 11 points. Uh, Fiedler have a wonderful opening of the tournament, three wins uh, three matches won so nine points out of three games and then in another four matches only two points disappointing and this is why he is on the fifth place now Vasil Ivanchuk nine Boris Gelfand seven Vishian and six and Peter Leko five ending Lear and three as I said so that's the standings if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like and if you don't want to miss another content from this tournament press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one